What's up, people? Orsa Course here, coming at you with another Paragon deck build. Today, we're going to be looking at Sparrow again. I changed your deck up a little bit, got a few new cards, switched some things around, so we're going to talk about it here. Um, this deck, I went attack power, attack speed, health, pierce. And I think that's about it. But let's go ahead and jump into it. So the prime card, I started out with the Warlord. That's 65 physical damage, 100% damage bonus. Once you kill that prime monster, get the prime buff. So I like my sword to hit hard. You can argue that, uh, you know, the Centurion might work as well. If you want that extra uh, health, go for it. Uh, this build, I think, has enough health in it to where I didn't feel like I needed it, but it's up to you. It's all preference. Next, my consumables are pretty uh, stacked out here. I got a health potion, hunter strength, Scout uh, Ward, four strike tokens, and a Blink Charm. So we'll talk about the Blink Charm last. So Health Potion, now that I have the Hunter's Drink, I usually go Hunter Drink over a uh, Health Potion. Um, I might take the Health Potion for maybe the first couple of minutes of the game until I level up a little bit. And then I'll go uh, with the Hunter's Drink because it starts to um, heal for more than uh, the Health Potion after a while. So I always go with the Scout's Ward. That's my first choice, Scout's Ward. You gotta have vision on Sparrow. I mean, sometimes I argue, well, you know, if you feel confident, you don't have to bring it. But for Sparrow, I say you always have to bring it. Greystone, you can jump out. Twin Blast, you might be able to get away with the Rocket Boots, but Gadget, or Sparrow, you gotta have your Ward. So, but like I say, it's all optional, but I would highly recommend you bring the Ward. So I have four Strike Tokens. Um, the way my deck is set up, sometimes I might have a point floating around, but I have so many strike tokens that I just fill it in with that. So if you don't have strike tokens though, you might want to change the numbering up on your uh, cards. But since I'm trying to round with the blink charm, it just kind of works out for me. And I have like, I don't know, eight of these strike tokens. So it's just ridiculous. And then blink charm. I use blink charm because uh, Sparrow doesn't have an escape as we all know. So Blink Charm, it says teleports forward. So teleports your hero forward for your, uh, from your current location. This uh, charm kind of reminds me of Fang's uh, Mal's weeping, or sh reaping swipe or reaping dash, whatever his teleport is, that move, where he teleports, you know, like 700 units or something. This is very similar to that move. So it's not like a crazy jump. It's not Rampage or anything like that. But it does get you out of combat. It does get you away from the Chimera. It does get you away from the um, Kalari, especially if they already, uh, you know, jump on you. Like if Chimera jumps on you, you can usually teleport out of it. You're pretty good because he can't stick to you. So that's why I keep this in this deck. Um, it's kind of the cream of the crop for this deck. Blink Charm gives you that escape. Now, let's get into the equipment. Now, like I said, this is kind of health heavy, so uh, bear with me. Instead of armor, which I know people are getting used to seeing with Sparrow, but I changed it up just a bit. So I went with Amulet of the Veteran. Um, that's 6.5 physical damage, 100 health. Once you fully upgrade it, you get another 200 health. I equip this with a major strike, health, and a minor strike. So like I say, going heavy on the health, but we're also going to have a pretty good attack damage here. Now, Guardian's Ward, this is usually the card that I go with first. It's optional for you. Like I say, build however you think is necessary for the situation. But I usually go with the Guardian's Ward because, like I say, I like to have vision. I like the vision, uh, everything. I ward out everything. If I can get into the enemy's jungle, I'll ward out their jungle too. You know, or at least the entrances. You know, I don't get crazy. But um, I this has 6.5 physical damage, 100 health. And then I equipped it with six or uh, three minor strikes. Once I fully upgrade it, I get that 6.5 physical damage. So a nice little card to start out with first. Gives me a easy to upgrade. Six points, you can get that fairly quickly. Get that vision early. Make sure you don't get behind it. Don't get ganked. So that's why I go with the Guardian's Ward first, first usually. Now I have the Wind's Carver Blade. And we all know this one. 6.5 physical damage, 5.5 attack speed. 6.5 physical damage, 5.5 uh, attack speed once you fully upgrade it. And we do this one with a major kinetic with that 16.5 attack speed. And then we go with two strikes for the 13 physical damage. Now that gives us a pretty good attack speed and it gives us pretty good uh, damage. So I like that. The second wind carver girt blade has a major strike, strike, and then a kinetic. So like I say, this time we favored attack damage more, but we also threw a little bit of speed in there because you know, you want a little bit of speed. Now, 
we got the Stone Tooth Heart. This card, 100 health, 16 physical penetration, and once you fully upgrade, you get another 300 health. Now we equip this one with three pierce. So that's 32 penetration. Now, I know usually I only build like 32 penetration. This time I'm building like 100 and something. Um, with this deck, I wanted to make sure that I could cut through armor because people are starting to, or they've been building armor pretty crazy. And, uh, you know, even like if I want to go up against a tank, uh, this will make sure that you're actually doing some pretty decent damage to them, even if they're building uh, armor. So that's why I keep that in here. And uh, also, it gives me so much health. I thought that would be a good card to have. So health and penetration is why I went with that. And lastly, we got the Swift Creek card. The 100 health, 5.5 attack speed, and then 300 health once you upgrade it. And we equip this one with a 2 health or 200 health and then 2 kinetic giving us that really good attack speed we got good damage going and we got a crap ton of health right now especially for Sparrow so that's the deck proper you know so let me know your thoughts on that right now let's go ahead and take a look at our moveset though so right here we got Sparrow doing her little bow for you so we got that bow shot that's her basic attack we all know um, that levels up as you level so you don't have to worry about that it gets stronger as you get stronger pretty much 35 physical damage is ranged now we got the piercing shot here which is a very good move so while you're holding it uh, while you're holding R1 or whatever it is for uh, PC uh, you charge up this bow uh, shot and it deals 50 damage and it goes in a straight line but it cuts through anything so you can shoot it through a wall you can shoot it through a mountain well as long as it has the range but you know what I mean it goes through uh, like anything objects so, but it only has a range of 2,500 units, so you got to make sure you uh, make sure the person is actually in range. But it can catch most heroes, like Greystone jumps like 1,000 units, 1,200 units, something like that. So you can catch him. Rampage, when he jumps in his enraged form, you're not catching him. But most people you can catch. So I like this. If you charge it up for two seconds, it deals the maximum amount of damage, so keep that in mind. So right here we got Hell of Arrows. So Sparrow rains down arrows in an area, dealing 20 physical damage over four seconds. I like this move because if you uh, start with that, you can go ahead and start building up your relentless stacks. So basically each time Sparrow hits a person, um, and she does it in succession, so back to back, she hits harder each time, which is this move right here. That's her passive. So successive hits within five seconds on the same target deal an additional three physical damage. This effect stacks up to 10 times and is triggered by any damage Sparrow causes. So your piercing shot, your regular bow shot, your hell of arrows, they all stack relentless so that's good to know you can sparrow can hit really hard especially if you are good at aiming her last and her uh, most powerful move i think is uh, the inner fire well her ultimate of course is the most powerful so every bow shot fires a triangle of three piercing arrows for the next 10 seconds side arrows deal 30 percent of the bow damage increases with each level i like this move because if you're in a team fight and you want to like focus the carry you can do that and still get some damage on the other heroes on the enemy team also, if you're bad at aiming, you can just pop that and just go in because you're going to hit him, you know, like he can't get away. You might not hit him with the middle arrow, but you're going to hit him with something. And that's the, you know, sometimes you just got to take what you can get because sometimes people are jumping around. You're just not hitting your shots, whatever. Everybody has those days. Anyway, people, that's the deck build. That's the move sets. Um, usually I prioritize inner fire. Uh, when that's up but when that's not up i go relentless over uh the other two so relentless and then piercing shot of hell of arrows i think that's up to preference but i always go relentless if you're hitting your shots i mean sparrow's gonna do so much damage it's ridiculous really so let me know what you think in the comments i'm curious to know what you think about this deck i think it works pretty good for me but i want to know if you try it out how it works for you also let me know what hero you're enjoying right now like who are you playing Right now, I'm enjoying getting back into Sparrow. I'm actually Master Sparrow. I haven't played her in so long, though. I forgot all about the girl. But I'm enjoying Sparrow right now. Grim, Murdoch, uh, Greystone. So, you know, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying a couple of characters right now. Let me know who you're enjoying. Let me know who you're playing. Also, if you like the video, make sure to drop a like, sub if you want to see more content. And uh, share the video out if you think somebody else will like it. Anyway, people, this is Orsa Course. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.